Hey guys, Coach Gaglione here. This is another edition of the Powerlifting for the People podcast. Uh, for those that are listening on iTunes, um, you may want to consider maybe also re-watching this on YouTube because we are going to do some visual uh, demonstrations on the whiteboard. But th at the end of the day, uh, the majority of the content is going to be just auditory. So uh, feel free to kind of bounce back and forth on either platform. Uh, but again, if you're listening on iTunes, we're going to do the, uh, the best uh, job we can if you're listening to the podcast version of kind of outlining all these uh, principles. So. Uh, I kind of decided I wanted to kind of dive in a little bit deeper into a little bit of programming stuff uh, about our, our program philosophy, kind of how we organize training, uh, and also kind of give you like the why behind it. I think as any good coach should be able to do, you should be able to always be able to explain uh, kind of why you do things a certain way. If you want something a little bit more uh, in detail and depth, it's a short read, uh, but I think it'd be very helpful. You can also check out the Powerlifting Handbook uh, by my chubby little self. So you can check out the powerlifting handbook. It's a short read, but I think it gives you a lot of principles. It's not going to give you like a bunch of actual programs and things like that, uh, but it's going to give you the principles behind what we do. So a lot of the stuff that we're going to cover today uh, is also in this book. So I highly recommend you check this out. Uh, it's, I think it's, it's like less than 20 bucks. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. It's definitely a great resource, uh, whether you're just a lifter or a coach. So definitely check out the powerlifting handbook for more information. So today we're going to talk about the training week. Uh, in a previous episode, we kind of talked about organizing like an annual plan or kind of how you would organize your training, kind of what phases of the training, uh, how should you organize your training in terms of fa phases, uh, how long the phases sh should be, uh, and also um, what kind of intensity ranges and rep ranges you should be working in to kind of achieve certain goals, whether that be off-season, hypertrophy, strength, or peaking phases. Uh, so today I want to talk about kind of organizing uh, the training month. So obviously once you kind of have your annual plan uh, set up, or if you, again, maybe you're not going that far in advance, but maybe you, you know, um, you kind of, you know, you're entering a certain phase of training, maybe it's an off-season block, maybe it's a hypertrophy block. Uh, for the sake of this video, we're just gonna say it's some, maybe somewhere in between, uh, maybe somewhere in like, maybe a later, a later, a late hypertrophy phase or an early strength phase. And we're gonna kind of just use sets of five, uh, just as an example for the training month for today. Uh, and then uh, in subsequent, in later videos, uh, we'll kind of and, and content, we'll kind of talk about breaking it down even further into a training week, and then eventually a training day. But today, we're going to talk about training month. There's really two uh, ways you can kind of do this, at least in, in our methodology. There's obviously a lot more uh, instances, but you can kind of break it down even further. Uh, there's all different types of periodization, and periodization basically just means it's a way to organize your training. Uh, so we're going to talk about periodization in terms of again a training month. So we're going to say. Uh, you know, you can have a micro cycle and a macro cycle. Uh, so for most people, a micro cycle is going to be a w one week of training. Uh, there are certain people like uh, Sweet Burns comes to mind. He likes to extend his micro cycle out to around like a nine day cycle. Uh, so there's maybe four main workouts, but you're, you're only going to do three workouts per week. Uh, so it kind of extends. Uh, so it's like a nine or 10 day kind of uh, micro cycle. Uh, for most people, we kind of live and we work on a seven day schedule. So it's just usually easier to organize training in a seven day micro cycle, but this obviously you could certainly um, have whatever micro cycle length you'd like. Uh, you don't, it doesn't have to be seven days, but for most people it just makes more sense from a sustainability standpoint, from an organization standpoint. So we're gonna just, for the sake of today, we're gonna just assume it's a seven day micro cycle. Uh, and then a macro cycle for us would be uh, usually a month of training, about four weeks. So usually when we think about in terms of weeks and months, Organizing training that way just makes it a little bit easier to kind of manage, uh, especially if you're a coach that's working with a lot of different athletes, or if you just have a busy schedule, it's just a little bit easier to kind of think in terms of weeks and months that way. So for that reason, we, that's why we like to choose a four week macro cycle in most cases, and then um, a seven week, uh, seven day, excuse me, seven day micro cycle, and then a one month or a four week macro cycle. In general, uh, every four to six weeks, uh, we're gonna take some sort of deload period. Uh, so usually in that fourth week, uh, there might be a reduction in intensity, or there may not. Uh, but we've what we found, we've, what we've learned through like people like uh, like Dr. Mike Isertel and, and other people at the Renaissance Periodization. Uh, there's a lot of great resources from there for diet and training. You should ch definitely check them out if, you, if you're not familiar. Uh, but we've kind of learned over the years that the main driver uh, to kind of reduce fatigue is going to be volume. Uh, so your intensity could still be kind of high, especially if you're kind of going into a meet. So you don't necessarily need to drop intensity too much. Uh, in that fourth week, but you will, you should have at least about a 50% reduction in volume. Uh, so for example, maybe your average, maybe you're on an average, you're doing sets of, uh, you're doing like five or six sets. 
Uh, so in that fourth week when you're doing a deload week, uh, so you're gonna reduce the volume, so I would reduce the amount of sets, uh, cut those sets in half, so maybe you're only doing two sets uh, instead of five or instead of four, for example. So that's just kind of something when we're talking about deloads. Uh, you do wanna make sure you have those planned, uh, planned periods of uh, re reduction in volume. That way progress doesn't stall and then you don't kind of overtrain and uh, you know accumulate too much fatigue too fast. So that's gonna allow you to kind of train many, you're gonna string many uh, macro cycles together uh, for a good training program. So there's kind of two different ways you can kind of uh, approach this uh, and we kind of go into the more detail in the powerlifting handbook. Uh, so you could have like a linear pr progression or a linear periodization or you could have an undulating periodization or like an undulating progression. Uh, when you stretch, if, if you look at our programming, when you stretch it out and from you go from more of a bird's eye view, uh, it, it's still linear in nature uh, when we're going from like an off-season plan to a hypertrophy phase, to a strength phase, to a peaking phase, there's going to be like that linear progression, but just week to week, there's gonna be fluctuations in uh, both volume and intensity, okay? Uh, so in general, and then with a the linear progression, there's going to be a steady increase in, in either uh, volume intensity or a combination of the two, and we'll kind of explain that. So we'll probably go over the linear progression first, just because it's a little bit easier to illustrate, uh, and it's gonna be uh, more applicable to the beginners. Uh, the most famous kind of prog linear progression, um, or at least, you know, most, uh, I say, common in the strength training and powerlifting world would probably be starting strength. Uh, so if you are like a brand new, like rank novice who's never touched a barbell before, uh, we do think like something like a starting strength program, and you could obviously adjust the exercise selection and uh, the frequency a little bit, because uh, I'm not necessarily a fan of like, let's say, squatting three days a week for a beginner. Uh, me personally, uh, but it's not to say that you can't, uh, just because I think you need, you need to take some time to learn the technique properly. Uh, that's one of my things. That's a conversation for another day. But something like a starting strength linear progression uh, would be an example of a linear program where you're just kind of increasing the amount of weight every workout uh, and uh, until you can't, basically. So a linear progression is a good choice if you're a novice, or a linear progression is also good. Uh, I like to use linear progressions. Uh, for an off-season period, maybe, you, uh, or if, you, if a powerlifter has had a long layover, maybe they're coming back from an injury, a linear progression where you're just slowly adding weight, or slowly adding intensity, or slowly adding reps, or volume week to week is going to be a good choice for that, for that situation. So a linear progression does not necessarily mean uh, it's only for novices. It could be for advanced lifters, and there's plenty of, you know, again, Ed, uh, Ed Cohen's programming and stuff like that. Uh, that. A lot of those templates you see online, those are also linear progressions where you might be going from eights to fives to threes, you know, to four, uh, fours to threes, to doubles to singles, going into a meet. Uh, so that can work fine, obviously, for an elite athlete as well. And uh, we'll kind of go over the differences, but we'll go over the linear progression first. So we're just gonna assume uh, the intensity range is gonna be somewhere between 70 to 80%. So maybe it's on the tail end of a hypertrophy phase, or it's the very, very start, it's a very, very early strength training phase. We're just gonna assume we're doing sets of five, uh, somewhere maybe in like the 70 to 80 percent range in there. So maybe week one, uh, we're starting off kind of modest. And again, we're using that again 70 to 75 percent range. And we're just going to do three sets of five for our primary exercise of the day. Uh, we're not going to kind of go into supplemental or accessory work. Uh, we can, we'll cover that when we go over like a training week and a training day. So we're just going to talk about kind of the primary movement for the day. Uh, but usually in general, the, the accessory movements and supplemental exercises will usually kind of match a similar volume and intensity. Uh, it'll kind of be dictated by the, the primary uh, kind of intent of the day. So we're gonna also assume kind of it's a volume kind of focused day. So in week two, there, we, can, we can do a couple of things. For a linear progression, we can obviously increase the amount of sets we're doing. So we can increase from three sets to, to four sets. That's gonna increase the overall volume and workload, so it's very simple. Uh, so a couple other things that we can do here, uh, we can also increase the, the intensity. So for example, maybe I'm doing three sets. Let's, uh, let's assume I'm like a 500 pound squatter uh, and maybe I'm starting with, uh, with 80%, which you know would, could be challenging, but, but doable. So maybe I'm starting with around 400 pounds. So at 400 pounds on this day. Okay, and then on the next week, maybe I'm just gonna increase my intensity just slightly. So maybe I'll do somewhere between, I'll do another step, but I'm also gonna increase the, the load as well. So I'll do like 405 or 410, so I'll increase a little bit. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm a newer lifter, maybe that, you know, like again, five pound jump for someone who's a 500 pound squatter, uh, it's a very, it's a small increase, okay? Uh, but a five pound jump for a female could be a, a too big of a jump. So 
uh, maybe they're only like squatting 100 pounds. So that's where kind of where fractional plates and things like that come into play if you're trying to increase the intensity. Uh, you might also, be, uh, for, for newer lifters and weaker lifters, you might also just want to increase the amount of reps they're doing. So you can obviously go from three sets of five, maybe to three sets of six or something like that. Uh, that would be another way to kind of drive the volume a little bit and keep the intensity relatively similar. So in week three, we're going to go up again. We're going to go five sets of five. And again, we can, if we like, if we feel good, we can kind of increase uh, the intensity. We can go, you know, 410 or 415 or 420 on this day. Okay. So now this, this third week, uh, so on average, the average kind of volume is going to be like four sets of five here. Uh, so we might, we might keep the intensity the same. Uh, so we might just still, still say the 400 one, we could drop the intensity slightly if we'd like. Uh, but I could just do like two sets of five because I want to cut the volume in about half. And we'll just say like we could, we could maybe increase, we could keep the intensity the same or we could decrease it. So I can go back to 400 pounds or I can go up if I'd like, if I feel good. So that'd be kind of an example of kind of a linear progression um, for someone who's maybe like, a, you know, and it sounds like weird, but like an intermediate novice. So someone like that's a rank novice, we're going to probably try to just keep increasing the weight every single week. Uh, but this would be maybe an example of like an off-season plan for someone, again, who's like a 500-pound squatter. And then we can kind of repeat. We can kind of we could start uh, at a higher training max, or we can kind of start at a higher weight. Maybe we're starting at maybe we're starting at 405 and continue to kind of just progress slowly over time. So that's just an example of a linear progression. Very, very basic, uh, but again, good for an off-season plan for someone who's more advanced or good for someone who's also just kind of starting out. So... Uh, pretty, very, pretty simple there. Uh, what I've kind of found, especially when you, as you get stronger, uh, is that uh, sometimes it's good to kind of uh, undulate uh, the volume and intensity. So that's gonna, we're going to kind of come back up here. So when we're kind of organizing the training month, again, we'll kind of assume like a similar uh, kind of situation where we're kind of using somewhere between 75 to 80 percent, and we're going to do sets of five. So in this undulating kind of model, uh, on week one is going to be like a higher stress. We're gonna start off like fairly challenging, but still doable. We're gonna drop the intensity and or volume. We're gonna do a medium stress, medium volume. Week three is gonna be very high stress. So this is gonna be the, the week of the high, could, could be the highest intensity and or the highest volume in our, in our kind of methodology, it's usually the highest amount of volume. So the volume is gonna be very high. And then in week four, uh, there's a couple of different things we could do here. So it's going to be either it's going to be either low stress or low volume or both. Uh, typically, with a lot of our programs, you'll see uh, sometimes we like to actually have it be like a high stress event as far as in terms of intensity, uh, and just kind of use it as like a testing day uh, where we do like an AMRAP set or something like that at a given percentage. But it's usually only one all-out set, so it's not really stressful from a volume standpoint. Uh, but it's like high stress in terms of intensity. But since we're reducing volume, like really considerably, sometimes even more than half, uh, we can still kind of get some good recovery and still get a, like a little bit of a test on that week. So it just depends on where we are in our training cycle, uh, what kind of what we're going to do on that day. And if we know we're going to go very high stress in terms of intensity on this, in this workout, uh, we might make this like a speed workout or something like that, um, kind of, you know, in a later, like a peaking or strength phase of the program, which you kind of see if you're kind of familiar with some of our styles. So I'm going to kind of go through uh, two different examples here. So we'll kind of use the sets of five. Uh, so let's just, again, let's assume, uh, again, so maybe for the high stress, it could be anywhere from like four to five sets of five reps here. And again, like probably again with that 75 to 80% range. So again, we'll just assume it's like a 500 pound squatter. So maybe that's at 405. In week two, it's medium stress. So there's going to be two, uh, there might be two different, depending on what, what kind of, uh, where we are in the program. Uh, so, you know, like a hypertrophy block of training. Uh, typically, we won't utilize a lot of speed work or anything like that. Uh, and then for those that are not familiar with like speed work or the dynamic effort method, it's basically that you're doing a high amount of sets with a sub-max weight. Uh, for, so, for example, on a squat, you might do 10 sets of two. Uh, somewhere between 50 and 65 percent. You can use usually some, some sort of accommodating resistance band or chain to work as acceleration. So I like the speed work. I don't want to say speed work is a deload. It's not, but speed load generally is less stressful than volume work 
or uh, max effort work or some, uh, like when you're doing like really heavy triples, doubles, or singles uh, where you're really straining. So in general, uh, the speed work could be a good um, kind of choice for that medium uh, kind of volume. Uh, just because, again, since the intensity is lower, even though the amount of sensor sets are high, your overall workload is not going to be that great. So speed work could be a good way to get a technical session in. Uh, you're going to work a lot on technique and form and force production, but it's going to give you a reduction in overall workload, and it's also going to allow your body to kind of feel fresh going into the next the next week. Where usually, again, that week three is going to be the hardest week of training. So week two, we might do uh, two to three sets of five reps, and again, it could be like a similar, you know, so maybe, maybe it's, uh, you know, 410 to 415. In that case, now the other, again, if it's a strength training phase, we might also put, uh, we might not do volume that week, we might do something like 10 sets of two. So with a four, with a 500 pound squatter, we usually use like 80 pounds of chain. Uh, so maybe, let's say we'll use around 60%. So we might do 300 for 10 sets of two with 80 pounds of chain. So you can see how like since the total system loading is still gonna be similar, uh, but they're gonna be deloaded in the bottom and uh, it's gonna be a lot less stressful on the spine since it's only gonna be like 300 pounds in the hole. So it's just a little bit different of a stimulus uh, and obviously the big difference between doing like 10 sets of two uh, or, you know, it could be like, we'll say 8 to 10 sets of 2. So, when you're doing 8 to 10 sets of 2, the other advantage of that is you're also getting 8 to 10 first repetitions. So, you're going to practice your setup a little bit more frequently. Uh, so, for someone that's a little bit stronger, um, this may be like a more appropriate uh, kind of method uh, during like a strength training phase as far as a way to kind of reduce the intensity a little bit and reduce the overall workload. Uh, and allow for a little bit greater recovery when you're going into something that's like a very high volume kind of workout. Okay. So now when we're going into this very high kind of volume kind of phase, uh, this uh, high volume micro cycle, we can get anywhere from like maybe five to six sets of five reps. And this will be like fairly heavy. We might uh, not, maybe we won't do sets across, maybe it'll be like kind of a pyramid type scheme. So maybe we do somewhere between 405 and 425 on this week. Maybe we kind of do like 405, 415, 425, and work back down. Uh, that's that sort of thing. Uh, you know, it could even be heavier than that. Just just using that as an example. Uh, as someone progresses as well, again, if this was a strength training phase, uh, we might also do something on this day like you know five sets of three, and then maybe somewhere like even heavier than that. Uh, that could be maybe at like a five rep max weight, so maybe it's somewhere between, you know, upwards of like 455 or something like that. So we'll say maybe like 415 to 465. So it's going to be a lot of triples. Uh, we also could potentially do something like, um, we might do like, a, so this would be like a speed strength kind of dynamic workout. We could also do like a strength speed day where we might do some like five sets of three with chains at like a lower percentage, and then also do some three heavy doubles. So I'll kind of give another example over here, if you, if you guys can see that. So we might do like five sets of three at 315 with 80 chains. And then we'll do three sets of two, we might go 345, uh, 375, and then 405 doubles with 80 pounds of chain for something like that. So trying to get somewhere close to like their uh, one rep max at the top uh, with, with the chains. So that could be another like kind of workout there. So there's some different situations depending on, uh, this would be more of a, during like a hypertrophy style training. Uh, this would be more for a uh, strength training phase. And then this would be like something that's, you know, people that like to use like bands and chains, a little bit more calming resistance. Uh, so we'd like to do, you know, just add a little variety and kind of work some different sticking points. And depending on where you're weak or where you're strong, it would maybe dictate if you're using more straight weight or more chains. Uh, if you're an equipped lifter, if you're a raw with wraps lifter. So someone who's a raw with wraps lifter, and maybe they're training in knee sleeves this cycle, something like a chain could kind of mimic uh, the strength curve of like a knee wrap or like a squat suit if you're an equipped lifter. Uh, if you're more of a sleeved lifter or someone who's more brand new, 
you're probably gonna use less accommodating resistance in more straight weeks, so it kind of matches the strength curve a little bit better. Uh, typically, the sleeve lifter is gonna need to spend a little bit more time working that bottom end range of motion, where someone like a knee wrap lifter or uh, an equipped lifter might use a little bit more bands and chains in their training because they're gonna usually get stuck a little bit more towards you know, halfway, three quarters up or toward the lockout. So those are just some different examples of something you might do like in week three uh, for again, either like a late, hyp late hypertrophy, a strength phase, or a strength phase for like I said, a raw with wraps lifter or an equipped lifter. So for week four, there's a couple of different scenarios here that I'm gonna kind of go through. Uh, if someone's really beat up, you might just do one to two sets of five. And again, the accessory work will also be deloaded as well. Uh, and then again, it's going to be somewhere maybe, we don't need to drop the intensity too much, but maybe we do somewhere between like 405 and 430. Okay. So for a more advanced lifter or a lifter that's maybe getting ready for a meet, we want to kind of test them out. Uh, we might try uh, like a five rep max or a three rep max or just as many as possible set uh, between 87 to 93 percent depending on like what how many reps uh, typically uh, for most lifters are going to hit somewhere between uh, between three and five reps between 87 and 93 uh, percent and obviously you want to try to hit like a rep record so you know if your rep record is going up if your projected one rep max is going up that's a good indication that your your competition single uh, will go up during the contest. Now, is this a surefire thing? Absolutely not. But in general, if your projected one or max is going up, your rep records are going up, uh, they're trending upward, that, that's gonna be a good thing. So, and obviously you wanna make sure when you're doing a rep record or a rep max test uh, that you're going to um, hold up yourself to a competition standard. Um, that's very, very important. So obviously if you're doing like a five rep max and four out of the five reps were, were high, uh, that you can't really compare that to your previous five rep max that was to a, that were say an inch below parallel. So that's going to be important. Uh, same thing if you're benching, make sure you're you're pausing your rep maxes, deadlifting full lockouts. I will say the only um, caveat to this on the deadlift, I think as you get more advanced, I do think um, you know you should you might you might potentially need to wear straps uh, when you're doing something like he uh, really heavy rep work. When you're doing like five reps or more, there's people kind of kind of argue back and forth with this, but sometimes, especially, let's say you're maybe you're a hook grip lifter, and uh, you know maybe you just don't your hands your hand health is a consideration. So that would be kind of the only situation where maybe you might do a rep max with straps, uh, but that's kind of an individual thing and more of an advanced question and something you should talk about with your coach um, if you have a coach. So just figure I kind of let you guys in with that. I will say with this too, uh, some people make the mistake of uh, now if you're a beginner. More of a beginner and you want to take a five rep max uh, it might be advisable to just do five reps all the way up uh, to, that way to accumulate more volume and just get a little bit more practice uh, that being said once you get to more of an intermediate and definitely for advanced stage i'd recommend just warming up with singles doubles and triples because again one of the goals of this micro cycle is we're trying to redu reduce volume so if you're doing fives or triples all the way up uh, that's you're still going to accumulate a lot of volume even in your warm-up so that's something to consider um, if you, if for whatever reason you're programming and you're programming, you want to take like a rep max uh, somewhere like, like not in a, in a, like a deload week or a reduction in volume uh, micro cycle, then you could certainly, uh, you know, do like fives all the way up if you're taking a five rep max. But in general, if you want to get a true test, if you're using it as a testing day, uh, then I would recommend uh, that you just do singles in your warm-up. So you might want to do like, you know, somewhere between 80 to 85% for a single, uh, depending on, you know, or even upwards of 90%, you know, get within like three to 5% of where you want to be for like your top set, if you're more advanced. Uh, so for example, like for me, like I might just get within 50 pounds. If I'm doing like a squat or a deadlift variation, if I'm doing a bench press variation, I might get within 20 or 30 pounds. Um, for someone who's weaker, they might have to get within you know, 15 to 20 pounds of a squat or deadlift, they might have to get within five to 10 pounds of a bench. Uh, for women, they might need to literally take a single with the, with the AMRAP weight that they're going to do, and then to take it for as many as possible. So it just depends on where you are here. Um, if you're more of kind of a conjugate style person or you want to just add a little more variety, uh, you could also just do like a max effort movement on this day. Uh, it doesn't have to be the competition exercise, obviously that's, that's traditionally how max effort work is done. Uh, but so that's that's another thing that you can do. Um, 
I'm trying to think of anything else. So that's basically, yes, yeah, so that's, that's kind of a way. So for, again, for this, it's a little more, more advanced. You are going to accumulate some fatigue and you're gonna have some you know, neural adaptations there. Uh, but since you're reducing, again, volume is gonna be the, the biggest driver of accumulating fatigue. So since we're dropping a lot of fatigue, yeah, you can still kind of get away with keeping your intensity very high as long as you're only doing one all out set. So that's kind of my advice. So this is kind of organizing a training month. Um, if you guys are interested in you know, learning more about how we program, you can check out the Powerlifting Handbook. Uh, for more information, if you want to get, if you're interested in online coaching or uh, any of our other events coming up, you can check out the links below. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, stay strong, and I'll see you soon.